Hi, it's Robin. Since this is Pi Day, at least I hope I get this video out before the end of Pi Day, I thought we'd look at a couple Pi-related Commodore things. Thanks to my patron Steve Bills for the suggestion. The first thing is, did you know that the C64 has Pi built right into it? It's got a special character. If you hold down Shift and press the up arrow key, it actually prints that cute little Pi character. Looks like a little... I don't know, camel or polar bear or something to me, and press return. It returns a constant, and for most purposes, that is totally fine. There, we're done today. But if you want to calculate pi to more places, that's possible. There's actually a website that has binaries that you can download and run on all kinds of different vintage computers to calculate pi up to as many as six or nine thousand digits and there is a c64 version now i do have my super cpu plugged in today but nothing i'm doing today actually requires it but it's kind of nice to speed things up when you're doing this kind of number crunching there'll be a link in the description below if you want to download and try these out for yourself i've loaded it up here and let's just try running this program number pi calculator version 9 number of digits up to 6360 digits now let's just do, I don't know, 800 because it'll fit on the screen nicely. So here we go, blank screen. No, it does run a little faster if you turn off the VIC because then the CPU doesn't have to share any clock cycles with the video chip, but it's more interesting to watch, of course. Here we go, 314-1592653585. Two three eight four, <laughs> and so on. So I could pretty much I could keep up with that, but it's actually remarkably fast for a computer like this. So I'll throw the twenty megahertz switch. Now there's actually a super CPU specific version which runs quite a bit faster than this using some of the sixteen bit opcodes and so on. But anyway, we're not going to run that today. Yeah, it picks up speed uh, after a while. I'm not sure why that is. Anyway, so 58 seconds to calculate that with some cheating. So that's not what we're talking about today mainly, but if you want to calculate pi to many digits accurately on a Commodore 64, I don't know why, Go ahead and try that. And there's some interesting benchmarks on the author's page as well. So check that out. But when I think about Pi for the Commodore 64, I think back to this issue of Transactor magazine made here in Canada back in the 80s. And I guess I was just 11 or 12 years old. This was the very first issue I ever bought. Volume 5, issue 2. I actually picked up a newer copy of it because my old one was so beat up. But among the many interesting articles in this issue is... Finding Pi Experimentally by Michael Bertrand in Madison, Wisconsin. And it talks about how we could calculate Pi using random numbers, something called the Monte Carlo method. And it can be used to roughly calculate Pi. By the way, just don't get your hopes up. This is not going to give a very accurate version of Pi. It's an approximation. If you want accurate, you run that program I just showed you. The way it works is if you take a circle, Okay, we're wanting to calculate pi, and you know that the area of a circle is pi r squared, and if r, the radius, is 1, then the circle fits perfectly in a square that is 2 by 2, twice the radius. So the total area of this square is 4, and the area that the circle includes is exactly pi. So to experimentally find pi, we can simply drop, whether you call them uh, throwing darts at this board or raining down here on this field. And if we keep dropping points just by choosing random numbers, X and Y, then we can get an approximation of pi simply by counting the number of points that fall within this area versus those that fall outside. And we can just express that as a ratio just by dividing the two and then multiplying by four and we end up with an approximation of pi. So unfortunately this old article doesn't include source code, it includes a type in program, but a bunch of it is machine code 
It just runs on the pet. So instead of running his original program, I was organizing my discs last week while I was getting all those Easter eggs uh, games together. And I found my logo discs, got logo and the logo utilities. It says French logo in the corner, but that's not true. I don't know. That was, I think I got these from a, from a school. Now, if you don't know, logo is a educational programming language invented by MIT back in the 60s, I believe. And during the 80s, they made quite a few 8-bit computer versions, including Commodore released this one. Now, I haven't programmed in Logo since the 80s, but this last week, I've been relearning it so that I could implement this experimental Pi. Okay, so let's boot it up. Logo includes this excellent manual. It's a great big thick thing, just absolutely packed with info. And just as an aside, I also have the French version of Logo. Now what's very curious about this is that not only is the manual in French, as you would expect, but unlike most languages, all the commands are rewritten in French as well. Like Appel and so on. Those are the actual names in the program. Hey, we won't be looking at that today anymore, but that's very interesting. I think really rare. Loco actually has copy protection, which I believe is very rare for Commodore distributed products to actually include copy protection on the disk. I want to stress that I'm not a Logo expert. So if you happen to be and don't like my program today, feel free to leave comments about how it could be written better. All right, so here we are, Commodore 64 logo. Okay, I've got my source code here. And if we type catalog, we can see a disk directory and we can read source in. This is just like the load command. You go read, quote, pi seven, but you don't include the dot logo. It automatically adds that and not even the closing quote. Okay, and it's going to list all the procedures that are now defined. A whole bunch of them, that whole top list, circle L down through circle R, are part of a package on this logo utilities disk. And that saved me a bit of time in some of the circle drawing that I did. So logo has procedures, but there's almost no distinction between the built-in primitives that this language has and ones that are defined. So you can load in a set of procedures and it's essentially expanded the language. So we'll look at one that I did. Just type two and then the name of the procedure, setup. And it brings us into this text editor, which is pretty nice. So to set up, not only is the command I type back there in command mode, but here in the editor, it's just kind of like the function header. And then down at the bottom is the end command indicating that the end of the procedure. CS stands for clearing the high res screen. Actually, this is a bit premature. So we can go from command mode here into turtle mode. And if you know anything about logo, this is the most famous aspect. There's this turtle, this triangle sprite on the screen and you can type commands like forward 50 and the turtle will move forward 50 pixels or 50 units and you can turn right 90 degrees and now you see the sprite has turned and you can go forward which can be abbreviated another 50 like so you can type home and it will draw a line behind it. There's a pen up command, abbreviated PU. And then we could go forward 100 and the turtle doesn't leave a trail behind. Then we'll go home. We'll clear the screen and in immediate mode, which is what we're in right now, you can do a bunch of things. Like if we want to make a square, we could go repeat four times and then square brackets give a list of forward 50 and then right 90 degrees and you can probably guess that this will oh <laughs> pen 
down. <laughs> there we go. It drew a square. See how you can add these little primitives together, and this is why it's excellent programming language. Today there's the Scratch language that has a lot of these logo concepts in them. And it's great for kids as well. So if we clear the screen again, now we can do something like this, two square, and then just type in, repeat, same thing, and then end, control C to define it. Square is now defined. So let's type in square. There, and it draws the square. If we go left 90 and draw the square again, so you see how you can build it up. We can add parameters to as well. So if we want to go to square and then a colon to show that's a variable we want, so we can replace the 50 with the variable that we just defined, just like a local variable. Control C. And now if we do square on its own, it requires that extra parameter or an input as Logo calls it. Let's do square 100. And there you go. It's drawn a bigger square. Now we can go square 50. And you can even make neat patterns. Like if we wanted to repeat 90 times, I'm just making this up here, right four degrees and then square 50 and square 100. Let's see if this works. Yeah, there we go. I'm going to use my super CPU here. <laughs> It's overflowing a bit. It has a wraparound mode by default, which you can turn off. Okay, back to one megahertz. And you can use the function keys. F5 goes full screen bitmap. F3 has that, that split screen mode. And F1 is full text. Reset with goodbye. Okay, so now we'll read that. Pi 7. This is my program. So it's bringing quite a few procedures. So we'll look at this setup method I made, or setup procedure. So here we go. Clear screen, pen up, home clear screen, forward, and now I've got global variables size and scale, which I'll show you in a moment, that we're going to draw forward, pen down, right 90, and we're going to draw a circle, the stands for circle right, and you pass it the diameter that you want, and then back, and then drawing a square around it, and I'm just going to, anyway, I'll, I'll show you that in a moment. And so now we can just type setup and it will draw our area here. There we go. So that's our testing ground where we're going to be calculating pi. And Logo's nice how you define these procedures and they're easy to test in isolation. You're essentially building yourself a whole bunch of commands that can be strung together into your final program. Now, of course, lots of modern languages are like that, but when I was a kid and I had basic and then I started learning machine language, in those cases, we usually just had one huge program and well, you tried to make subroutines and so on, but they weren't all, it wasn't clean and elegant like Logo is here. We can look at all the different procedure names by typing pots. So let's look at the main one which I called calc for calculate pi, I guess. And this is where you define these global variables, make, and you put just a quote in front. This is a little ugly. I'm not saying I love every aspect of logo, but make the size 1000. So this is the, the size of the square that we're drawing in units. 
but then we're scaling it down by 10 to pixels. Size is actually like the radius of the circle in numeric units, whatever they are. I made it a thousand instead of just a hundred because I found the accuracy went up a little bit by making it a bigger number. The scale is to reduce it down to pixels. So the 1000 numeric units are divided by 10 to turn them into pixels so that can be rendered on the screen. And total is the total number of pins dropped or darts thrown at the board and in circ is the number that fall inside the circle. And these are the two numbers we'll use together to calculate pi. Split screen two is to shrink that split screen area down from five lines to two. And for reasons unknown to me, it has to be included in brackets or it doesn't actually work or parentheses. High turtle randomize seeds the random number generator that isn't necessary but you'll get the same sequence of random numbers each time. Then we'll call one of my procedures called setup, which I just showed you. That draws the board. And then we're going to repeat 10,000 times three procedures I made. RND, which generates a random point. STAT, which tracks the statistics. It does the counting of whether the random plot fell within the circle or not and then p plot i think is this pixel plot <laughs> it actually draws it on the screen so that's how i separated it logo is a bit strange that it, as far as i can tell it doesn't have a multi-line repeat structure so anyway if there's a logo expert out there who can show me but it seems that these square brackets, this is a list, and we're not really going to be exploring this today, but Logo handles lists very well, and it can repeat a list of procedure names, but I haven't figured out a way to make this cleaner to, sp I'd like to spread it out onto multiple lines, but uh, it just gave me errors when I had the closing square bracket on another line. So let's look at those three other methods. Oh, I keep calling the methods three other procedures. So random number, we're going to make a global variable pixel x. And what we're doing is we're taking the size, in this case 1000, multiplying it by two so that it's not just the radius, but the full size of the square. I'm adding one because I want the range of the square to go from, say, negative 1000, zero in the middle, and then 1000. So that's actually one extra place. And this symbol, that uh, exclamation mark, indicates that this line is one logical line that has wrapped around. And then I'm subtracting the size. So we're just doing a random number from 0 to 1,999, subtracting 1,000, so it goes from negative 1,000 up to positive 1,000. And we're just doing the same for y. All right, next is to stat. And here we're just going to increment the total dropped by one every time this is called. And then we're just doing, this is Pythagorean's theorem here. We're taking the contents of PX and multiplying it by itself and adding it to the contents of PY times itself. This is the same as squaring. It's just faster to do an actual multiply. And we're checking if that is less than size times size. So this is just Pythagorean's theorem, but instead of bothering with the square root, which is a slow procedure, we're just leaving it expanded. This is a common optimization. I do it in game programming when I need to do Pythagorean's theorem for determining a line length, just giving it the x squared plus the y squared. When doing a comparison, you can just leave everything squared and not even bother doing the square root again. And then if it's inside the length, the line length, then we can increment the in circle count. And then we're just going to print, this is PR, prints the total here. Because that's just a ratio, the number in the circle is just from zero to one. We multiply it by four. It's just like one quadrant, essentially. We multiply it by four and then divide it by the total 
for it to calculate to pi. And one last one, p plot. So we lift up the pen and then we are going to position the position the turtle at location x and y. We're going to position the turtle at that random location, but we're going to divide each the x and the y by scale. And then we're going to put the pen down. When you put the pen down, the turtle doesn't automatically draw. So I just go forward zero. So it just stays in the same spot, but it draws a dot in that location. Uh, I couldn't figure out any other way of making that happen. Okay, we've looked at the whole program. So to run it, all we have to do is type in calc. And here it goes. And there we go. So you see at the bottom, it's the estimate of pi. And as each pin drops, that version of pi gets updated. And it's going uphill quite a bit right now. Oh, coming back down. So of course we're looking for 3.1415. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get it. Sometimes it's been really close and other runs it hasn't been. I don't think the random number generator built into logo is all that good. It'll take quite a while to stabilize. Right now, every time one drops, it affects the ratio a fair bit. Okay, and I'm sure you guys don't want to just watch this all day. So I'm going to turn on turbo on my super CPU again, just to speed it up. So again, if you want an accurate version of Pi, this is not the way to do it. <laughs> But it is an interesting experiment. And it just seemed like a interesting way to look at Logo. Logo has many other features, by the way. And uh, if, you, if you guys are really interested in it, I'll do another episode about it. It does do sprites. It does music. It has this whole list processing, which was very advanced for the 80s compared to what most of us saw on our microcomputers. Well, it's getting closer. Come on, 3.14. And of course, the program could be tweaked further. Might be able to get more accuracy out of it. Oh, 3.16, 3.15. Go down, 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 down. Bad. You're going the wrong way. Oh, oh, go down. Oh, yeah. Yay, there's one that says 3.14992. <laughs> okay, thanks to my patrons who support this channel. If you want to check, check out my Patreon page, look at the description below. There's various bonuses, including having your names in the credits here. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you next time.
see you.